Welcome to our video edition of Learn with LBSI for the month of September 2021. For this month, we are going to review how to utilize the approval process feature that is found within SAP Business One. The approval process consists of templates and stages. Approval templates are used to determine which users will need to get approval on specific documents, while approval stages are used to specify which users can approve the specified transaction. This will be beneficial for making sure the correct transactions get entered into your system. To begin, let's navigate to Administration, System Initialization, and General Settings to go over the settings to enable the approval process. In the General Settings window, and under the BP tab, there will be a section titled Approval Process. This is where all of the settings will appear for the approval process feature. In order to use the approval process feature, you will need to make sure that the Enable Approval Process checkbox is checked. If you would like to utilize the approval process through programs that utilize the Data Interface API, otherwise known as DI API, you will need to check the Enable Approval Process in DI checkbox. We will go over the rest of the approval process settings as we go through the approval process feature. With the initial settings out of the way, Let's navigate to Administration, Approval Process, Approval Templates to demonstrate how to set up an approval process. As previously mentioned, approval templates are used to set up which users will need to receive an approval before their document can be added. You can designate a name and description to the approval template in the corresponding fields. In order to use this approval process, you will need to make sure that you have the Active checkbox checked. If you would like the approval process to trigger when updating documents that were not generated after being approved, then you can check the next checkbox. This will cause any updates to pending or approved documents to go back through the approval process and will require approval again. The first tab on the approval templates window is the originator tab. This is where you can choose which users need approval for this specific approval process. The next tab over is the documents tab. Here you will be able to select which documents are a part of this particular approval template. Any document selected will need approval prior to the document being fully added. Let's move on now to the Stages tab. This is where you can add an approval stage to your template. Approval stages are where you can set up the authorizers for the approval template. In the Approval Stages setup window, you can designate a name and description to your approval stage in the corresponding fields. You can also specify how many approvals or rejections are needed in the number of approvals and rejections required fields. Whichever number you enter into either field, that is how many authorizers will be needed to approve or reject the document that goes through the approval process. In the authorizer table, this is where you can select which users can approve the documents that go through the corresponding approval template. Now that the approval stage has been added to the approval template, Let's move on to the Terms tab. This is where you can designate a certain criteria that must be met in order to trigger the approval process. Towards the top of the tab are the Launch Approval options. You can choose to have the approval process always activate when a specified document is added, or you can select the When the Following Applies radio button. If you select the When the Following Applies radio button, a table will appear where you can choose when the approval process will activate. You can specify the activation criteria based on the quantity, item code, total, and the document total. After choosing which terms the approval process will look at, you can specify when the approval process will activate by selecting a value in the ratio dropdown. Finally, the value field is where you can enter the specific value you want the approval process to take into consideration when activating. For example, if I select a total document with ratio of greater than and a value of $250, any purchase request with a document total greater than $250 will go through the approval process and thus require approval from an authorizer before being fully added. You can also add custom queries to the approval template that can determine when the approval process will be triggered. Now that the approval template and stage have been set up, let's go through the process of how the approval process flows. 
while logged in as the originator. I will add a purchase request that contains a document total larger than $250 in order to trigger the approval process. After clicking the Add button, a request for document generation window will appear, mentioning that generating this document requires approval from other users. The screen will also display which approval template was triggered and will give the user the ability to enter in some remarks about why the document should be approved. Once the user clicks OK, the authorizer will receive a message that contains the request for approval in their messages slash alerts overview window. When the authorizer selects the message, they will see the remarks that were typed in, as well as the document that was requested for approval. Under the Request for Document Approval section, the authorizer can click on the golden arrow to be taken to the Request for Generation Approval window. From there, the authorizer will see the information about the document being requested and can view the draft document by clicking on the golden arrow next to either the document draft number or the draft key. If you would like the originator or authorizer to be able to update the draft document, you will need to make sure that the corresponding checkboxes on the general settings window are checked. After the draft document has been reviewed, in the decision field, the authorizer can select if the document has been approved, still pending, or rejected. They can also specify why the decision was made by entering in a response in the remarks field. Now that the decision and remarks have been updated, the authorizer can update the window. Back on the originator side, once the document has been approved or rejected, they will receive a message in their messages slash alerts overview window stating if the document was approved or not. That message will contain the draft document where they can click on the golden arrow and add the draft document if the draft has been approved. The approval process feature also contains two reports that you can use to see which documents need approved, as well as the ability to approve documents from some of the reports. The first report we'll go over is the approval status report. It can be accessed by going to administration, approval process, approval status report. In the approval status report selection criteria window, you can select which document statuses you want to view under the document status section. You can then refine the report by the originator, authorizer, template, request date, business partner, and document total by defining a range in any of the fields. Moreover, you can select which documents you want to view the report for by selecting the checkbox next to any of the documents. Once you update the selection criteria, you can click OK. When the approval status report opens, you will notice that it will display a list of documents that trigger the approval process for the selection criteria you selected. You will see the various draft documents as well as their current status. This can be useful for quickly seeing the document statuses for all the documents in a certain approval process. The final approval process report is the approval decision report. This report can be accessed by navigating to Administration, Approval Process, and Approval Decision Report. In the Approval Decision Report Selection Criteria window, you can select which decisions you want to see in the report by selecting any of the corresponding checkboxes. You can then also refine the results by the Originator, Authorizer, Template, and Request Date. Once you update the selection criteria and click OK, the Approval Decision Report will appear. This report, like the previous report, will display the documents that went through an approval process. However, the difference here is that you will be able to adjust the decision of the draft document from this report. In the Answer column, you will be able to select a decision and provide remarks for why you chose the decision. After doing so, you can update the window to save your changes. If a document has already been added, you will see that the answer column is grayed out and that there is a document number in the document number field. If a document has been rejected, the line will appear red, however, you will still be able to change your decision if you decide the document should no longer be rejected. This month's tip of the day is helpful if you need to hide or add fields to your marketing documents. This is great for hiding fields that are never needed or adding fields that some other users have that may not appear on your screen. 
While in the document you need to hide or add fields to, select the form settings icon towards the top of your screen. This will display the form settings window for the marketing document you are currently on. Navigate to the table format tab and select which fields you want to hide or add by selecting the visible checkbox. The active checkbox will make the field read only if it is left unchecked. Some fields will not allow you to check the active checkbox. You can also move fields around by holding your left mouse button down on the field until a white box appears around the field. Then you can move the field to a different location in the list. After you have rearranged the fields, you can click OK to finalize the changes you made so they appear on the marketing document. The approval process feature within SAP Business One is a useful process to help establish checks and balances to make sure the correct documents are being added. Join us as we help you learn more about what SAP Business One has to offer by clicking the subscribe button and turn on post notifications so you never miss a new video. As an SAP Gold Partner, LBSI can help you take full advantage of everything the system has to offer. To get in contact with us, visit our website at www.lbsi.com and navigate to the contact link. You can also email us at sales at lbsi.com for sales related inquiries or SAP support at lbsi.com if you're an existing client in need of support assistance.